Hello and welcome back to Deep Images. Today we are continuing our Halloween 2024 fair with the next installment of our first series, Zombies. We have with us special guest star panelist Yvette Izan, star of Island of the Living Dead and Zombies the Beginning by Bruno Mattei. We hope you'll join us, enjoy the show. Now let's get into it. <laughs> do you have any more time to sit in with us or do, or do you or do you need to go we would like to honor your time no no it's okay you sure uh, yeah yes okay okay because i'm going to turn the the gavel over to bill here to talk about a movie uh that's kind of tangentially you know related to this period of and genre well it is definitely the same genre Okay, um, it's so surprising now um, where everything's available. There's very few films that haven't turned up, London After Midnight. For the most part, you can find almost everything, but there was a time when that was not the case. And one film that kept haunting me because I would see pictures of it in Castle of Frankenstein or Famous Monsters or something was a film, well, I saw it under... The Living Dead in the Manchester Morgue. That's what they always called it, which I thought was a great title. Mm. It was also known as Let Sleeping Corpses Lie. And strangely enough, Don't Open the Window. Part of the Don't Do Something cycle of films that came out. Strange title. Um, and it's a zombie epic. Um, you know, kind of, thought I thought it was pretty much a zombie, um, you know, plague sort of thing. And I was surprised when I finally got to see it with a gray market quality copy that I got on a convention somewhere that this movie was from 1974. So it was not influenced by Dawn of the Dead. Dawn of the Dead had not been made yet. It was influenced by neither living dead, but it really is the first, I think, and I'm sure someone will correct me that kind of took the ending of neither living dead, where it looks like we're, we're on our way to beating this back to the next level. And, and there's an implication here that things are about to go horribly wrong. Um, it's not quite the zombie apocalypse, but it's leading in that direction. This uh, film was directed by Jorge Grau. Is that correct, Henry? Mm -hmm. And and Henry has gone on to some length about, about this director. This is really the only film of his I'm familiar with. It's quite good. I was surprised that he hadn't done more. I think this movie, had it come out just a few years later, had it actually, <laughs> excuse me, come out after Dawn of the Dead, it would be much more well-known and probably more regarded, but it just fell into the cracks mm. between Night and Dawn when people weren't sure what, what to make of it. it um, it's Spanish. takes place in, I believe it, well, Manchester Morgue, I guess. It takes place in England. It's got an international cast. And um, our hero is not a particularly likable guy, but he's uh, riding along. A woman causes a accident or something he kind of bullies his way into her having to flip him around and as luck would have it they are attacked by a vagrant who doesn't look like he's had a very good day doesn't seem to feel any pain he's a zombie of course <laughs> nobody knows what zombies are and um much like night of the living dead where they don't they didn't really waste a lot of time explaining why this is happening who cares it's happening this one they do explain there's there's some government guys uh-oh and they're using some new sonic uh, machine to kill insects. So it all comes down to props. And, um, you know, they didn't test things out enough on the side effects. The side effects are that it resurrects the dead. But that's really weird. The, the one thing about this film, logically, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Yeah, the zombies are resurrected by sonic waves. Sure, why not? Well, they um, but they then, do a little pseudoscience where they say the, a little the, the the infrasonic waves like only affect like in the only infect in lower life forms and like, like insects and zombies yeah and like recently dead humans somehow it grabs their yeah. brain waves uh, but then the zombies are creating new zombies by putting their bloody fingers on the eyelids of yeah, other zombies so it gets into magical kind of yeah that gets into that and I think. You know, I was going to say, one of the reasons why I think zombies are so successful is that they are truly scary. I like slow-moving zombies. I don't understand the, even the principle of fast-moving zombies. I've enjoyed 
like the remake of Dawn of the Dead. I've enjoyed fast zombie movies, sure. But I, to me, that ruins the metaphor. A zombie is a metaphor for death. It is slow moving, but it will get you. There is no, you know, if I, I always thought a nightmare I would have is like being chased by a zombie where I can outrun a zombie, but I got to go to sleep. And they don't. He may only be going five miles an hour, but you know what? In a day, he's gone 100 miles. Am I going to be able to run 100 miles a day? I don't know. I'm going to get tired. I'm going to get bunions. My, the soles of my <laughs> shoes are going to wear out. And this thing is just going to keep on coming. That's the metaphor. Slow zombies are scary because you think you can outbeat them, but you can't. There's just too many of them. And they're relentless. Yeah, Bill. What, what's interesting is that even though this came out before Dawn and a lot of those Italian movies, mm -hmm. Living Dead for Manchester Morgue is kind of structured like an Italian zombie movie. It's very it dreamlike. It's not based on logic. Things just sort of happen, and then they kind of explain it, but they go, oh, we don't need to get it's too much. It's a blueprint. And yeah, and when I first saw it, that was what was really interesting to me, was that it's like a proto-Italian zombie movie. Yeah, almost. well, so yeah, it, it's, it started the whole Euro wave in a way because Jean Roulin took basically the same concept for Grapes of Death. Yeah, which I haven't uh, seen that one, but I've seen some Jean Roulin and know kind of how he operates, so I could just imagine. But not to interrupt what you were talking about, Bill, but I just no, thought no, that, that's was a, that was a point that I wanted to make that when I first saw it, which actually... I first saw it recently, like within like the past two years or so. And, uh, and that was what struck me about that movie. It reminded me of, of something like, you know, like an Italian movie or even something like phantasm. It kind of has a little bit mm -hmm. of that, you know, that vibe to it as well. Yeah. That dreamlike quality. It also reminds me a bit of, um, blind dead series, which oh, of yeah. course is another zombie thing. And boy, we're talking about slow moving zombies. If the blind dead were any slower, they'd be moonwalking backwards. I mean, they oh, are, yeah. they are oh, slow yeah. zombies, but they still get you, especially if you're so stupid that you scream, which they're blind. They, well, you know, they can't see fair, you unless you let them fair, know. They're a little faster because they have some horses with them, but well, other than that, that are also yeah. dead. Yes. I mean, oh, yeah. yeah. It's true, yeah. But not skeletal because that would, they just fall apart. It doesn't yeah. make a lick of sense. Um, but back to this one, it, it is very entertaining. It's got a good cast. Uh, Christina Galbo, who Henry is a big fan of. And she's got that look. I've, one of the things I like about Euro horror of the time is that the women are attractive, but also they, they're attractive in, a, in a, an intelligent way. Like I've always been, I've always loved Daria Nicolotti uh, from you know, Daria Argento's muse because she's, She's, of course, very attractive, but she's also got intelligence. She's not just some bimbo, you know, not just some woman in peril who's there to die. She's got some agency of her own, and that comes across and just, to me, makes makes them far more attractive. She's very good in this. Uh, Ray Lovelock, who uh, plays the supposed hippie. He's not much of a hippie, but I guess, you know, in 1974, it didn't take a whole lot to be considered a hippie. Yeah, he rouses the ire of Arthur Kennedy, who plays one of the most unlikable characters in horror movie history. Mm -hmm. He's a jerk cop who just takes an instant disliking to uh, this hippie and is convinced, despite all evidence of the contrary, that he's responsible for what is clearly a zombie epidemic going on, but too dumb, too dumb to figure it out. It's got a real downer of an ending. Hey, it's a horror movie from 1974. It kind of has like a, happy it has a kind of a fun and happy ending in a way. Well, yes, in in the sense of karmically justice, I suppose. But yeah. in the sense of hey, here's some characters I liked, and I hope they go live happily ever after. Not so much. No, not so. Much. Uh, but yeah, with not, with his uh, character, I kind of felt like it was it was too little, too late at that point. I mean, it was karmic, but it was just kind of like I wanted him to die within five minutes of his appearance. <laughs> yeah. I just felt like I waited way too long. <laughs> And and as you say, the the violence in this is a step up. I mean, people people talked about how Night of the Living Dead was just such a such a gut punch. Watching it now, there's almost an innocence to it. Yes, it was you know the folks who dropped their kids off at the drive-in or whatever the matinee, thinking it was a universal horror picture, you know, are still paying for the therapy of those kids who came home traumatized. But the gore <laughs> is not especially gory. I mean, yeah, they went to the butcher shop and got some. It's in black and, and white. It's in black and white. This is in color. 
and people are eviscerated. And the makeup effects by the wonderful um, Gianetto De Rossi. Who, Italian, yes. It's the man. He's the man. He, you know, he did zombie. He did um, the Beyond. zombie holocaust. He, I mean, basically a lot of stuff. And and yeah. just has a, just a wonderful, nasty look to this things. This was one of his earlier gigs, you know, I, I think. Yeah. And and there's some unforgettable shots when when um, they turn the machine on and ramp it up and hits a morgue in the hospital. So there's there's a scary thing. You're in the hospital. You're sick. You're not at your best. And now here come the patients who are even worse shape than you, back from the dead and ready to party. And um, <laughs> yeah, there's some serious evisceration. <laughs> there's a, there's a lot of gore going on here, and it's it's very effective. It must have been a, a punch to the stomach back in 1974 because again that's it was the first zombie movie that ever had explicit gore i'm not saying there were there were horror movies around that time that had some but that was really ahead of romero dawn of the dead Mm -hmm. doesn't get enough credit the so i don't know i don't know if romero saw this it did not get a great release um i think it was put on a double feature with last house on the left which okay pleasant dreams kids don't want to put the Um, window yeah, don't open the window. What's it's just a mean? terrible ad campaign. <laughs> and and you know, there's a few films from that time before before Ooh. Dawn really Dawn is the one that really busted open the gates oh, for yeah. the extreme stuff. And, and then The Exorcist, of course, too. Um, this movie and um I Drink Your Blood, if if that had been able to actually get a release yeah, before it was, that was nice cool, to yeah. ribbons by the by the censors, I think. Uh, would be better known than they are now but it's definitely worth seeking out still hard to find although i think it was on shutter recently no it, yeah but um, it's it's available at two different companies to put it on blu-ray 4k uhd it's it's and a good it's a good seller and it's a good copy too some of these movies yeah. You, yeah. you know the one that i got like i said on the gray market i don't know where they filmed it but it looked like looked like trash it was still good but if you a lot of these films if you've only seen them in their butchered cheap VHS version, look and see what they have now because they've managed to rescue some from disintegration and look absolutely lovely. And they can cause a complete reevaluation. Oh, I agree. Thought about yeah. the film and Bill Lustig, uh, the blue underground restored it originally. I have the blue underground Blu-ray. Um, but since then two other companies have put out versions and one was like super deluxe. Didn't you buy the super deluxe one, Tim? Um, it's Synapse, yes. See, I just couldn't uh, justify upgrading. Yeah, because Syn- Synapse <laughs> also put out, like, they have the ultra-special version of Tombs of the Blind Dead. They have a couple of kind of adjacent movies that we're talking about. Um, but yeah, they put out uh, <laughs> Living Dead at Manchester Morgan 4K. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I haven't seen it in 4K. I mean, I've seen it in a two, the 2K restoration that Lustig did. <laughs> it looks great. Oh yeah, it's yeah, it's they they always do pretty solid transfers. So mm-hmm. even if it was like an eight bit version, I'm sure they'd make it look pretty nice. <laughs> mm-hmm. right. But it's it's entertaining to see. Also, you know, zombie films have become such a easy way for filmmakers to do social commentary. And this one, I mean, there was some of that in Night of the Living Dead too, but it was the social commentary was was fairly muted, really. Um, and this one front and center i mean this guy whoever the guy who made this movie was not a big fan of cops yeah growl was, growl was totally anti-establishment yeah, yeah it's it, all his movies it, it's now, interesting in real life think of oh, how okay. many think of how many horror fans you know are sort of pro cop but think of how many horror movies now, where cops okay. are portrayed you know ineffectively and inept and i always thought that was an interesting divide well, the thing well, is, in real life, if if the okay. dead rose from the grave to feed on the living, um, I am finding the biggest well armed redneck slash cop that I can find. I'm standing behind him 100 percent of the way. I mean, you know, <laughs> any port in a storm. Um, but yeah, Just I hope know. he does the right thing. Right. That's the <laughs> pray he does the right thing. Although, if I'm looking for a reason why this is happening, I'm going to be looking for the hippie because you know he's he's probably kind of paranoid and clearly something's gone wrong. Um, you know, the fact that they're experimenting with a brand new bug killing device and zombies are rising. Yeah, that could happen independently. Sure. Sure. It's, it's kind of like when we did Candyman, you know, we were talking about how 
no matter no matter how much evidence or or, or or you know there was that there was so ridiculous no one would believe helen no one not one single yeah. person even her husband nobody and i was like n- not, nobody stopped for one second even to question it well okay bernadette kind of did but then she died but uh <laughs> but you know it's like uh that's how this movie was it's like you know no matter what happened the police officers like no it's hippies hippies are behind everything Hippies are behind everything. They damn and, them all. And you know what? You know what's kind of funny, and not even from an undead perspective, but if you kind of think of zombies just from like a mindless horde of killing machines, you know, to take the undead out of it. They did a lot of movies in the seventies that were like hippie zombie adjacent. I mean, even I Drink yeah. Your Blood that I he drank made, oh, that kind of is the same sort of thing. Yeah. yeah, very much so. Oh yeah, but I think that's another thing about zombies is that. They're the scariest monsters because there's no hope. No. If, if vampires are real, if Dracula is is attacking you, okay, the presence of demons implies the presence of angels. If if Dracula, this personification of evil, exists, and and yet what what kills him? Crosses, holy water, all the symbols of good. So good also has a power. There, you know, there's a comfort in that, even if you're one of the victims. But zombies, they have no soul. They they're basically just the soul is gone. They're just meat. This is a monster that it has no. There's no religion involved. There's no ethics. There's nothing to fight. It's just a reanimated corpse. Humanity stripped down to its essential hunger. That's I think, depressing. I think the There's zombies no coming back. The zombies may have a tapeworm because they're always hungry, and <laughs> I think that that's a good jumping off point. Just saying, they're all, they're yeah. always looking to bite into some flesh. Well, and, you know, in Day of the Dead, they dissected the brain and they said, oh, okay. it's not that they're yeah. really hungry. <laughs> you know, they're not really trying to eat for nourishment. You know, it's just like this right. this reflex hunger. They eat like, because they're you know. stressed out and they're oh, going through a lot. It, and they, it shows you, know, you where they my head do is. What they do. Yeah. <laughs> so they're so they're stress eating. Okay. <laughs> Until we got to uh, Return of the Living Dead, where eating brains mm-hmm. makes the pain of rotting go away, which is like, yeah. okay, wow. <laughs> Science. It's all coming together. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I love it. But this it. is a fun movie if you can yeah. find it. It's a, li- I think it's it's a uh, little slow be- in the way Yorohara <laughs> tends to be, but I found it wildly entertaining and really well shot. Oh, yeah. doesn't look much like anything else it's it's sort of that line between romero and and fulci and it has its own very unique place and uh, i wish more people knew about it so me too you got a few choices on on where it's going to be what it's going to be called <laughs> let sleeping corpses lie um do not profane the sleep of the dead i guess was the original <laughs> spanish title living dead in manchester morgue and don't open the window uh, wh- Search for them all, and maybe you'll find it. I heard, and I can't remember if this was ever verified, but I also heard it was called Breakfast at the Manchester. <laughs> yes, I have also heard that. I remember that. It's usually not a good sign when a movie has multiple titles. Well, and you know, Breakfast at the Morgue, I, that's that's right there built in creepiness. And and I and I just want to say, I mean, it's politically incorrect, and I don't want to offend the ladies in the audience, but the really shocking, <laughs> shocking scene in the movie uh, oh yeah it's when they they grab the nurse and they literally rip her breasts off and it's like totally realistic looking and you're like full frontal and i'm like wow it's horrifying that must have been the first time that was done in a movie that i can think of i don't know but uh wow <laughs> I, i've so, never seen it i was so appalled when i saw that and then years ago we did almost the exact same scene except we did it we played it for laughs because it is pretty in pretty one of your movies funny. Yeah, and it was pretty fake looking, and I know it was pretty fake looking because I'm the one who did it. So, <laughs> yeah, live and learn. Bill also has worked in special effects. Uh, for those who don't, gotta do I got to do one tomorrow? I'm I, I'm doing a zombie short tomorrow. I have to put a meat cleaver through a young lady's head, and <laughs> we've yeah. been there. Yep, <laughs> got to be done, man. Someone's got to do it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was going to segue over to Justin because he is also has an Italian horror one. So it's kind of a little yes, to Yvette before she has Excellent. to leave us, I guess. 
Well, I think that's right. What Bill said that the problem with zombies is there's no no prospect of rehabilitation whatsoever because they're they're totally mindless and soulless, and they're just relentless until they're destroyed. They're going to keep on coming. Um, as I watched Friday the Thirteenth, the final chapter last night at the Astor because it was Friday the Thirteenth, but in a way, I guess the Jason character is a little bit like a zombie as well because he's totally mindless and he relentless did end up and becoming just, a zombie. Yeah. Just keeps on coming. It's just that he's very hard to kill compared with the average zombie. Um, so that got a good audience reaction, uh, that film last night. It was quite funny. Uh, but anyway, um, I digress. So the film I, I looked at, and I had seen it before, probably in about 03, 04, so quite some time ago, um, is a cheesy uh, Italian um, zombie flick called Zombie 4 After Death, um, which I think is available on the Tubi app. I think as well, but I, that's not how I accessed it. But and it's it's um, from 1990, I think, um, and it's shot an uh, Italian director whose name escapes me, but Henry knows the backstory for all of this. But um, well, isn't it Italian... isn't it Fergasso or Mattei? They were one of the both of them worked together on that one. That's Fergasso, yeah, that's right, yes. Yeah. So um, and it was shot in the Philippines, um, and uh, it it basically I didn't know um, that. I've seen it and I for totally didn't know. Yeah, it's a, it's a Philippine, so it's a very sort of jungle type uh, environment, a lot of fog and mist. And it's got this sort of uh, pretty cool, um, because it's sort of late 80s, 89, I think it was filmed. Uh, it's got this um, Miami Vice style synthesized soundtrack going through every scene, uh, particularly when they walk into a cave. And the caves that they walk into on a, on a few occasions are effectively temples to the undead. And there'll be a, a semicircle or almost complete circle of candles, which somehow um, is supposed to stand in for the gateway to hell. Um, and the first temple they find's got a book of the dead, where if you read from it, it summons these zombies who will then attack. Um, but anyway, uh, so there's effectively it starts on this island, uh, which is with a research island where there was uh, some scientists researching ways to change molecular structure to try and cure human diseases, particularly cancer. Um, and they were using voodoo as part of their scientific research. And um, the daughter of a, um, a local witch doctor, it looks like a sort of a Haitian type gentleman, uh, um, she she died, unfortunately, in one of the experiments. So the witch doctor then wanted to take revenge. Um, and his revenge was to uh, basically raise the undead who would then attack these researchers. And so the opening um, 10 minutes or so of the film is a about uh, these researchers going into this cave and confronting the witch doctor um, and they shoot him. But in the meantime, he summoned these undead who then kill off the researchers, um, including some who are trying to flee the cave with their daughter. Um, it then fast forwards to this uh, speedboat going down a river, which is supposed to be 20 years later. Um, and the young girl who escaped, although her parents were killed on the island, is now uh, you know in her late 20s. And uh, there's effectively two groups in the, in the film. There's uh, these Vietnam vets, uh, the woman Jenny, who was a child when the researchers were, her parents were killed and attacked. Somehow she's forgotten all this and it's effectively a repressed memory. But she does have this feeling that there's something evil about the island. Um, and there's these three guys who are who are buddies in Vietnam, um, sort of in their, in their 40s, um, fairly blokey sort of individuals, and another woman who's part of of their party um and they go to sh they um they find that the boat loses power mysteriously so they have no option but to land the boat um and then then when they're in on shore in the in the jungle they're then attacked by some zombies uh one of their party a guy called tommy is um he he ko's the zombie but um when he turns his back on the zombie it rises and bites him in the neck and he's then basically walking wounded and he's been bitten in the neck losing a lot of blood um so they uh, they quickly uh, run off with him as as fast as as fast as they can and they they find an abandoned uh research or medical center um and it's a bit strange because it this is probably a plot hole they um it's supposed to be 20 years later uh, and uh the island's supposed to be abandoned in the meantime but yeah there's these uh, fresh medical supplies around including tubes of test tubes of blood and so forth um then there's another group uh where there's three people valerie david and chuck um and chuck is played by the uh 
gay, bisexual um, porn star Jeff Stryker from the 80s and 90s, although he's under his real name, Chuck Payton, and is effectively uh, top billing for the film as, as an actor as well. Um, and then uh, these other two researchers, these people are researchers trying to find out what happened to the original researchers 20 years ago, um, Valerie and David. So the three of them are then attacked in a in a cave, temple cave, um, when the lead researcher reads from a book and summons these uh, these zombies who are then attacked. Um, so there's a bit of a fight. Uh, the only person who escapes alive is Chuck, being the top villain for the film. Um, and also uh, Valerie and David are both effectively eaten alive while their brains are eaten in this, in this cave. Um, <laughs> Ch- Chuck then manages to team up with the, um, the, the first group, which are the Vietnam vets and Jenny, um, who are at the medical center. And they manage to find, uh, fortunately, uh, just before Chuck shows up, they find uh, these M16 automatic rifles, so uh, which is perfect for Vietnam vets to, to have these machine guns on hand. Um, and they then are able to basically hold the fort at this um, on the front porch of this medical center and blast in the guns at these zombies that try to attack. Um, the Jeff Stryker character, Chuck, uh, shows up and he helps them out as well. And there's, they pour some gasoline on the front steps and try and create a bit of a fire barrier as well. So it's all pretty predictable, cheesy kind of stuff so far. Does any um, of this sound familiar to you, Yvette? I mean, like half of the things he's saying were in those movies you were in, like plot points, <laughs> the island and the, the research place. <laughs> and I, I have to say the acting's pretty damn wooden and, and the lines are delivered in a fairly clunky style, including from the uh, the porn star lead as well. <laughs> so um, You expected who, uh, more out of him, right? <laughs> Well, of course not, but he does walk around. <laughs> funnily, funnily enough, um, apart from this woman who's writhing on the ground at the, in the first scene when she's turned into a zombie, uh, which was obviously a very sexual uh, type scene, uh, apart from that, it seems to be that Chuck is the, is this, is kind of the sex object of the film. He's walking around with his shirt open, showing these massive pecs uh, throughout the throughout the whole film. <laughs> but his acting his acting is pretty clunky, as is the rest of the cast, and there's certainly no no well known names in there. And it, it did remind me, in a way, of um, an inferior version of Peter Jackson's Bad Taste, which I reviewed um, on a few months ago, yeah. six months ago. But it, that's a um, that's a film that's much funnier, and I think the the spat the splatter and the and the gore is done much more effectively. It's a more humorous film than this. This is not really that humorous. I suppose it's humorous unintentionally, I guess. But and there is a bit of a spatter and gore, which mostly consists of the heads of zombies exploding under machine gun fire. Um, but what you find is um, first one and then a second of these uh, Vietnam vet characters is uh, overcome by zombies. Um, one is one is when he he talks to. Um, he thinks is his, his his girlfriend who was part of the team, but unbeknownst to him, she's already been bitten and is transformed into a zombie. So when she turns the side of her face, um, you know it's all it's 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 deformed and she's become a zombie. She then attacks him and bites him in the neck, and he is then overcome by these zombies, even though he'd just before that managed to cut down about fifteen of them uh, with his machine gun. So um, don't forget to hit him comes- in the head. Of course, he then, and it's very predictable stuff, he then later comes back himself as a zombie because he's been seriously bitten. But this time he's got a machine gun himself. So we find that a couple of the Vietnam vets who, towards the end of the film, are killed by zombies, come back as zombies, but they're armed with the M16 rifles they had when they were alive. That's kind of cool. So that makes them, that tends to even the even the playing field between the uh, the zombies and the heroes, if you like. Um, uh so towards the end, there's the, the last the last two standing are in fact Chuck, played by Stryker, and uh, Jenny, who was the the adult version of the young girl who escaped the island twenty years previously. Oh, okay. um, so they managed to get away, and there's a bit of a fight scene where uh, a good old Chuck manages to basically fight off it seems like about fifteen of these zombies, um, and uh, also Jenny he managed to grab hold of Jenny, and they run off, and then they they wake up the next morning. Um, and Jenny goes, oh, there's the cave, there's the cave I need to go to to end all of this. So they see an a, a, a entrance to a cave they then go into. 
but if you're expecting a happy ending, Hollywood ending, you don't get one, unfortunately. There's a bit of a um, Not an Italian a, horror. There's a bit of a, it's an Italian horror, so it's a bit of a tragic ending. Um, so she goes into the cave, Jenny, and does this incantation while looking into a mirror. Um, and she's, she seems to believe, after looking at this book of the dead, which is inside the cave, that if she reads this passage out, um, it will banish the zombies back to hell. But it has the opposite effect of what she intended, and she actually transforms, starts to transform into a zombie as she's looking into this glass. In the meantime, in the background, um, Chuck is attacked from behind by a zombie who actually pushes his hand um, straight through uh, Chuck's back and sort of grabs hold of his heart while he's standing there. So he, the, it's simple, obviously implied that both the main characters tragically die at the end of the film. And that's how that's how it ends. So, um, what I would say is it's not a, certainly not a boring film because it's only um, about an hour and twenty five minutes. And if you like gore and splatter films, which are cheesy but relatively entertaining, it's it's the case of it's so bad it's good. I suppose kind of kind of applies. Um, and uh, the the plot there is a bit of a plot line. It's a little bit convoluted when they talk about the the candles and the temples and the and this amulet that Jenny has, which she claims if she puts the amulet in the middle of these candles, it will ward off these these zombies. But that's never really properly explored. Um, and uh, it's um, the character development is pretty thin, I guess. But it, there is a bit of a a bit of a, a storyline behind it um, as to how it, how it came to be that this island was infested with zombies. And uh, the Jenny character is the link between the the first researchers and the second group of uh, second group of protagonists protagonist um so uh yeah it's uh it's if you just if you're just into a, a bit of a cheap uh, guilty pleasure sort of uh, film uh you know uh, i thought that chuck was good eye candy during the film i have to say um <laughs> but apart from that there's not much to and the fact that there's lots of lots of blood and gore um there's really not that much to, uh, to recommend the film well, and it's um, not it's not really related like we were talking about before we started shooting. And the, the zombie series in Italy, I mean, zombie was the name for Dawn of the Dead in Italy. So the first Italian movie called Zombie was really in Italy called Zombie Two. So right. internationally, it was called Zombie, and then so there was a Zombie Three that Fulci, the director of Zombie, produced and started to direct, and then Bruno Mattei finished it for him and. Then Matei and Fergasso collaborated on the next couple, and they did the three and four. I don't remember if they did five. Uh, Mark Marinowski, who I mentioned, who had this truckload of horror movies, I went to his house one evening about five, six years ago, and we watched uh, Zombie 3, 4, 5, and 6. Made it through the whole evening. But uh, I do remember that one being one of the better ones. Um, I don't know. You know, I mean, if it had a lot of humor... And like cr crazy elements, then I could definitely see that, that Fergasso probably co-wrote it for sure. Um, yeah, look, there was lots of there was a fair bit of droll humor in it, um, uh, but yeah, it was just sort of a, a good quick watch, I suppose. Well, you, you've um, got to see Hell of the Living Dead, Justin. I re I reviewed that before you came on it, and so the, we're here on the TV waiting to get played again. Yeah, he's watching it in my living room and uh, <laughs> get into the mood. Um, and Yvette worked, you may already have made this connection, but Yvette worked with Bruno Mattei, the guy who was involved with making the movie you just mentioned. So she made two zombie movies with him in the 2000s. So we talked about it in the first interview. And so we went, kind of went over it before you got here. And uh, so feel free to rewatch the episode later, but uh, you'll, you'll kind of figure out how the, all this kind of connects, you know, but so we're honored honored to have her here because she was an actual zombie slayer in an Italian zombie movie, and she's still making right. Donner movies with Italian uh, producers, <laughs> and uh, it, it's quite an honor that that you're here. Um, so, uh, so what do you think of all this, Yvette? Do you think we're a, a <laughs> bunch of nuts? But. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to embarrass you no 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 <laughs> i i'm enjoying listening and um i'm having fun <laughs> oh, okay well we appreciate that thank you 
Thing. Not so, not so in a good way. What Crazy you in a good way. Yeah. Not, <laughs> not sure in a good, good way. way. <laughs> yeah. Of course it's a good way. Yeah. Um but like those films. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. They're like Bill said, they're entertaining, which is you know more than a lot of movies can say. Um, That's right. Yeah. Hi, you've been watching Deep Images, our series on zombies, and this is our first session with Yvette Izan, star of Island of the Living Dead and Zombies the Beginning, as our special guest panelist. Uh, we hope you'll stay tuned for the upcoming installments in this series. Uh, and in the meantime, uh, please remember to... Uh, well, I'll let my, my co-host tell you what you... Well, you know, like, subscribe, and share, please. Um, I have no shame about asking people to like, subscribe, and share because, you know, uh, we are an independent um, community here. We're doing everything uh, ourselves. And, uh, like, let's just uh, do our bit to spread the love and the beautiful time that everybody has taken to research these movies and bring them to you. So... Yeah, we bring we do everything with love, but so that's what we'd like. We'd like you to share with love as well. So thank you. We appreciate you watching. Okay. Yeah.